In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can load 3D models in ARKit framework. Before we start implementing our code, first we need to find the 3D model and there are a number of websites that you can go to and actually there are thousands of websites you can go to and find a 3D model. This is poly.google.com. As you can see, there are different models available and you can also search for a model. Let's say if I search for angler fish, it will find some 3D models which are basically tagged with angler fish. There are also a website called Turbo Squid as well as Sketchfab where you can find more realistic looking models. But for those models, you may have to actually pay if they are paid models. We are going to use the poly.google.com, but all the information or all the implementation is actually the same no matter what kind of model that you use. So this is the model. You can actually look at the model from different directions by simply uh, in the 3D or 360 view by simply dragging your mouse. In order to download the model, I'm just going to click on the download and download the OBJ file. Let's go ahead and first see. There we go. Download and OBJ file. Now once you have downloaded, this is the OBJ file or the wavefront file. What we want to do, you, you definitely can load the OBJ file, but what I usually try to do is to convert the OBJ file into a DAE or Colada file. And for that, you will need a tool or a software to convert that. One of the tools that is available, which is free, is called Blender. If you just simply search for Blender, you will find that particular tool. Blender is a free and open source tool and you can download it and uh, create some amazing 3D effects or 3D models. But we are going to simply use Blender to convert our wavefront, which is the OBJ format, to DAE format. So let me go ahead and fire up Blender and show you that how you can take an OBJ and convert it to DAE. If you have not installed Blender, go ahead and install Blender. I already have Blender installed, so I'm just simply going to search Blender and launch Blender. And this is what the default scene looks like in Blender. I don't really need all of these things like this cube or the camera, so I can simply select and delete all of these things. So that I'm starting with a fresh scene. The only thing I really need to do is to import my model and then to export it as DAE. So file, import. The model that we're trying to import is OBJ because we downloaded it from poly.google.com and that's the model that they host. I'm going to go to downloads and I'm going to find the model that we just downloaded. So here we go, this file and go ahead and select materials. Uh, sorry, OBJ, model.obj. This is a material file which contain all the information about how the model will actually uh, look like the texture of the model. But what we need is the OBJ file, the wavefront file. Let's go ahead and click on import OBJ. And there we go. I can actually pinch zoom, pinch zoom to see my model. And it looks like the correct model, a beautiful angler fish. We don't really want to do anything with the model itself. So what I'm going to do is uh, simply select the model by pressing A. It's actually already selected. There we go and go ahead and export the model to one of these formats. The format that I'm looking for is Colada. So I'm just going to select Colada and go to the desktop and change the name of the file to, I can call it fish.dae. It will be placed on desktop and export the model. And that should do it. That should at least export our model. If I go to the desktop, you can see my file over here, which is a DAE format. I can open up the file by double clicking on it and I can still view this model in a 360 view by all directions. So great, now we have our model, but we need to load this model in augmented reality using the ARKit framework. So let's see how we can do that. I'm going to launch Xcode. And uh, now I can go ahead and say new project. And we're going to select augmented reality app go ahead and say next and we can call it anything you want i'm just going to say loading models 
Next. By the way, make sure that you are selecting scene kit over here and not sprite kit or metal. Let's go ahead and say next. Place it on the desktop is fine. Let's go ahead and say next again. So it will create our project. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to view controller and you'll see that there are there is a lot of code that we are not going to use and some of the code is actually even commented out. So all of this I'm just going to remove for now. If you want, you can use that, but for this particular example, we are not going to be using that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this scene. So because we are not loading the spaceship scene, so I'm going to remove that. I also need access to my file. So let's go ahead and get that. So where is our file over here, DAE file. Simply going to drag it over here in my project and finish. So this is my DAE file, great. Now sometimes you will say that, okay, why didn't you add it to the assets folder? You can definitely do that. Um, but you will need to have the directory structure of assets folder and like you will need to reference it kind of like this. If I go back, kind of like this. Sometimes asset folder does not work as expected. It throws some unresolved errors. So that's why I'm putting it not inside the assets folder. All right, but you should. I mean, go ahead and put it inside assets folder. See if it works. If it works, then great. All right. So what are we trying to do? Well, we're trying to load this particular file. So let's go ahead and check out the fish.scene file. It only has one particular node and that node is called model. We don't really want to call it model. We can call it anything we want. So I'm just gonna say fish model. Okay, so now this particular model is called flesh model. We also want to be sure that when we are looking at the model, it is correctly or, uh, oriented. So if you go at the bottom, you'll see the perspective camera Let's go ahead and select front camera. Now the front camera is the camera that you will see when you're looking it through your iPhone. This is very important and it will really help you to resolve a lot of issues. So when I'm looking through my iPhone now, uh, when I run the AR kit application, this is how I will see the fish. Is that how you want to see the fish? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Let's go ahead and change out some of the angles. Definitely that's not gonna work for us. So. Let's put a zero, nope, 90, that's great. You can also move the fish using these things. Sometimes it's just hard to grab on to those things. So let's go ahead and see if we can actually move the fish. Is that how you want to see or is that how you want to see? So you can put like different values. Is that how you want to see the fish when you actually load it for the first time? Yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, I do want to see the fish like this, like facing me, but you can play around with this spoiler angles to get the angle that you actually want. Okay, so now we have all of that stuff. Let's go ahead and load the fish scene. So I'm going to load fish scene equals to scn scene and we will provide some sort of a name of the file. The file name in this case is fish.dae. Make sure that the fish.dae is part of the target. So if you select the file, go over here to the first one, which is a file inspector. And this is very important that it, the target membership is actually checked loading model. Sometimes Xcode will add the file to the project, but it never really adds it to the target membership, which means that if you run your code, it will never see that file and it will break the code. Okay, so at this point we have the fish scene, that's great. And we can load the fish scene or we can uh, get individual models out of the fish scene which is very, very important if you have a fish scene or some sort of a scene with a lot of models and you want to inject those models into a different scene. So fish scene dot root node dot child node with name. And do you remember the name of the child node that we give? Fish model. Recursively, yes, please. And this will going to give us the particular fish model or the fish node in the other words. Let's go ahead and build that. And let's see if the fish node is unwrapped or do we have to unwrap it ourselves? So this is fish node. You can see that it is an optional, all right? So you can use a guard over here, like guard fish node, else, well, node is not found. You can actually say 
uh, fish model is not found. But now it should be unwrapped so that you can actually start using it. So once we have the fish node, we can insert this node into our original scene, which is the main scene of the app. So scene dot root node dot add child node and what node does we want to add fish node. We can also set some sort of a position that where it will display. So fish node dot position equals to SCN vector three and then some sort of a position X, Y and Z. In this case, Z is the one that is towards us or away from us. So we are simply going to change it to 1.0, which is one meter away from us when we are actually loading that particular scene. Let's go ahead and build this. Okay. And now uh, let's go ahead and run it to uh, see it in action. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, run the app and hopefully you'll be able to see it right over here when the app is actually running. And when it launches, you can see our beautiful fish. It can actually move around. I'm actually a little bit tied up over here with the wire, but if I was uh, wireless or unwired, I would be able to see this fish from all the different directions. See this fish. Now one of the things that this particular model is lacking a little bit right now is that it looks very, well, plain and uh, with no effects, meaning it doesn't really have any kind of a lighting effects uh, or light estimation or anything that is going on. Now, we can go ahead and improve that by adding just a default lighting. So I can actually go over here and I can say uh, scene view dot lighting. And then you will see that enable default lighting. It's only, you have to set it to true. And now if I go ahead and run this, you will see that it's not gonna be perfect lighting that is available to you, but it's definitely going to look much better than the last time. And here we go. Definitely you can see the effect. Now you can see a little bit more lighting going on on the fish, a little bit of reflections going on. It's not perfect by the way, but it's definitely better. It has made the fish come to life, right? We'll maybe cover lighting in the future uh, video, but right now just with default lighting, you can see it is way better than our last attempt. Great, right? So this is basically how you load a particular uh, model in ARKit. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video and now you have all the knowledge of loading custom models into your ARKit application. If you do want to learn more about ARKit development, then check out my course on Udemy, which is called Mastering ARKit for iOS. Now this course is really, really resourceful. Also, this course is very, very detailed. It has close to 16 hours of videos, 75 downloadable resources. You can see that we're gonna be building 25 plus augmented reality projects. It is always updated to the latest version of ARKit. And also you can see it has close to 4,200 students. And you can see with the number of sections that I have, it goes into great detail of covering everything that you wanted to cover, everything you want to learn about ARKit development. So check out this course. There is a coupon of this course is available in the description. So go ahead and click on the coupon, get an amazing discount and start learning ARKit. Thank you so much.